All right, do me a favor. This is a safe space. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Start to think about your job. Think about your job. Think, your, think about yourself at your peak when you're really rocking your job. And now, think about a robot doing your job better than you have ever known yourself to do your job. Not needing maternity leave, not needing paternity leave, not needing a coffee break. Now open your eyes. Scary. That's scary, isn't it? Well, you share that fear with more than half of the world's population when it comes to thinking about the fourth industrial revolution. According to the World Economic Forum, five million jobs stand to be lost due to the redundance that artificial intelligence will introduce to our job market and completely revolutionize the future of work. You see, I'd like to think that when I said think about your job, all of our faces just lit up. But don't forget, I'm the one that had my eyes open, and so I could see that a few of us, actually, our faces changed. I'm not going to point fingers and embarrass you, but some of us actually were quite disappointed to think about our jobs. But even though we don't want to lose our jobs, we don't appreciate them. And we don't want to lose them. Least of all, to some cold, heartless robot. Not the cold, heartless colleague you thought about, Steph, I'm watching you. So what do we do? What's the answer? How do we save ourselves and stay relevant in the fourth industrial revolution? The World Economic Forum suggests that there are 10 key skills that will help us survive and thrive in 2020 and beyond. Oh, no offense to them, but I've actually got a better idea. And I think that if we want to stay relevant and thrive in the fourth industrial revolution, in a virtual and digital world, all we need to do to work with our cold, heartless counterparts, rather than against them, is be childish. We have to be childish. That's all we have to do. We just need to be children. There are three key skills that children embody better than we do, and they've never even had to learn them. One, playfulness. Two, honesty. And three, inquisitiveness. Let's jump right in. One, playfulness. Put your hand up if you've caught a child playing with something that's not a toy. And now put your hand up if you're the child that plays with things that are not toys. <laughs> it happens all the time. I'm a teacher, and I see this all the time. Just give a child two pens, and before you know it, it's <laughs> But what most of us don't understand as teachers and parents is that play encourages creativity, collaboration, and vital problem-solving skills that are key for innovating in a digital world. Two, honesty. I changed my hair once, and a boy that I used to teach last year came up to me and he said, Miss Njapa, that hairstyle doesn't actually suit you. Ouch. So once I wiped the tear from my eye, I was able to come to terms with the fact that children are brutally honest. And it's so important to be honest when you have to be accountable to yourself and accountable to others, to chuck the ideas that don't work for the ideas that will work. Three, inquisitiveness. The constant desire to know and to learn more. Children are hungry for knowledge, and they ask questions even to the point of irritation to us parents. 
why are we not there yet? Why can't I put my finger on the hot stove? They are constantly asking questions, and this is something that we too should adopt. And so in conclusion, if we want to stay relevant and not just survive in the fourth industrial revolution, not experience the fears that we saw in our minds just now, but thrive, we need to constantly play. We need to remain unfailingly honest with ourselves. And last but not least, we need to always ask questions.